Um, yeah. So initially we we're going to do something with, uh, you know, season and stuff, but uh, like we just could not <laughs> get it working. And so, uh, after messaging Chris quite a bit late last night, I, uh, we pivoted at around 11 PM last <laughs> night. So, so you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to give us a break here. So yeah, we're definitely, um, so, uh, yeah, so, so we're kind of more focused on the, the design as well as kind of the lightning impl implementation. Uh, we'd actually don't have, um, we have a demo, but it's going to be more focused on the slides. Um, so yeah, so basically it started with this idea that like, um, we want a way for users to control their data. So, uh, Bitcoin is magic internet money. So let's find a use case for, for Bitcoin on, on the internet. Um, and one of the things that happens online right now is that you don't really get control of your data. Like a lot of big companies are just sweeping up your data, like, like a vacuum, just taking your data from. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you have implemented Google Analytics and mixed panel and segment or yeah, a lot of this stuff where you're taking your user's data. So um, there's these three companies out there you've probably heard of, um, been in the news. They're pretty infamous companies um, with a total aggregate of like $60 billion uh, in, in their market cap. Um, but these companies, maybe, maybe if you've probably heard of them from getting hacked, but <laughs> <laughs> and losing and losing all of your data, but how do they get that data in the first place? Well, when you go to do like, um, what is it like uh, when you go get check credit score checks? Like that's a big thing on their front page is like check your credit score. It's just a way for them to get your data, like to get more information about you, to fingerprint you, normalize the data across different uh, different places. They get more of it and more of it and more of it, and then they sell it to companies. And so it's like, well, the only person that's getting screwed in this or left out of this flow of money is the people that are actually providing the data. So next slide. So yeah, so basically what we created was a, uh, a Chrome extension that kind of sits between you and all the websites you visit. And it kind of puts up this block. So um, using, using, um, using standard APIs from the web, we can basically cut off so just similar to like an ad blocker. Um, but we can say like, instead of allowing um, this company to just like pull this data from, me, from you when you're visiting a website, we actually sit in the middle and we actually say, hey, if you want this data, you have to pay this user in Bitcoin for this data. So we're going to block all those requests that you're trying to pull from them right now and trying to like sneakily grab their data, uh, whether it's like your email address, whether it's your age, name, just trying to fingerprint you, stuff like that. We're going to block all of that until you pay them um, pay them for that data. And so, yeah, so basically some of the, some of the really basic information that we can get for a user is, um, yeah, your email is like your, your most valuable data that, um, any website would want to get. So when you put your email in here, we mask it, we turn it into a, like not your actual email, but we forward all emails that, uh, potentially go there. Yeah. Um, other things are your name, age, location, uh, stuff like that. And oh, okay. what's that? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So like, so basically this is like some of your basic information that's really valuable that brands, companies would want to pay you for. Um, we mask it. We can allow you to like anonymize it or like, instead of showing your exact birthday, we can say, Hey, you're a male between the ages of 20 and 40 or 20 and 25, something like that. Um, and so we can have like a granularity, uh, for that. So, um, so then if you go, so you complete your profile. So now, so now an interesting thing that you can do with this is now when you go to a website, say like you go to Allbirds, I got my Allbirds on. Um, <laughs> when you go to Allbirds, they can instantly have access to that data if they're, if they pay for it, since, uh, I'm putting it up for sale at, as I'm browsing, they can actually improve the user experience of their website, uh, instantly. So they don't have to have like a cycle of like, you don't have to log in. You don't have to, like, I'm sharing this information with them. They can, use my name, which is cool. So like, welcome Dylan, but they can also know that I'm a man. And so they can, they can redirect me right to the, the men's shoe page instead of just landing on the homepage, guessing what I, what I might be with no data. And then just letting me kind of navigate from there. They can have a lot more information about me. So this could be used with ads. It could serve more relevant ads to them and stuff like that. So that data, the, so the money flows, they pay through our app. We pay out to users. Uh, we allow users to connect, like connect their um, third-party Lightning wallet, so like Blue Wallet or Moon or anything. Like they can open a channel to us, or we can just do just pay them over the Lightning network. 
and you can kind of withdraw at any time. Since it's like smaller amounts of money, it's like more like microtransactions. And so we felt like Lightning would be like kind of the perfect kind of perfect system for this. Um, the funds do flow kind of one unit directionally in this case. So Lightning is typically like back and forth, back and forth, but the funds will be more unidirectionally from us to them. So we'd probably use something like Lightning Loop um, from, from the Lightning Labs to kind of continually refresh our, our channels with others. Um, but just kind of being a well-connected channel would help us keep the, uh, the funds flowing well. And then you can, yeah, you can see like a list of how much you've gotten paid from different companies that you've gone to um, uh, once they've kind of impl implemented it on, on their side. Mm -hmm. So there's like a two part to, to chicken and egg <laughs> a little bit, uh, we have to sell, but the kind of the idea is that, um, they'll want that data. And so they'll be willing to implement it. Yeah. And then the, another thing is that you can turn it off at, at, you could just turn it off at any point. So in the settings, you can, uh, kind of play around with like how much of the data is actually shared at any given moment. And because they would be going through lunch money to, you know, be able to serve you like proper ads or like customize the content for you. It's, it's all sort of like master genericized so that they don't actually have full access to that content. So at any point I can just be like, Oh, I'm, I just want to share like base information, which would literally just be like your masked email and nothing else. And they would no longer have access to that data. Um, obviously, like if you turn it down to like fully masked, um, where you're just sharing like a masked email, like the amount of sats that come into your wallet is going to be much lower. Um, and then you can, you know, turn it back up and, and gain like 50,000 sats every time you visit Facebook or something like that. So. I don't know if you want to talk yeah. more on that. No, I think I think you nailed it. It's just yeah, you can have control over who has access if they have access at all. Yeah. And um, then uh, a couple of other things that we wanted to get through is just like more of the design in here. Um, so like this is kind of the level of the abstraction uh, that you would be able to see. Uh, so like. On the left, we have fully masked where like the email address is completely masked. Uh, and then we show nothing about like who you are. Uh, and then the, the higher up you go, there's your mental. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Too far. <laughs> 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 this is good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Yeah. So, like, you know, if it's only math, if, if we're just sharing your email, and it's like a, it's just like a random string of letters uh, with a, a lot of money that I owe. Uh, and then the further up the chain you go, the more information gets shared. So you can see here, like, Satoshi was born, you know, 122.939. I just pulled that to the end. Guess a date. Oh, did he? Oh, well, I didn't look that up. <laughs> I, I was working too quickly. You know, <laughs> that, man. Uh, I mean, like, it's the same day that they made it illegal to have gold and copper. So, yeah, so I mean, like, if, it, if I'm doing more generic, uh, it, it ends up being more like a, a deep range rather than an actual state. So they can, you know, at least start to target my age range with a little more specific data. Uh, so yeah, uh, did you want me to? I just want to show the, the, you've got like the basic kind of onboarding flow of the extension done. Yeah, and then we can go to the So yeah, just like a normal kind of extension. So you click it, you punch money. Um, and you can just like email. Oh, look at that. Ooh. So we already have that one. So we're going to the you know, self steps. We don't have that implemented. What's Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we work there, so uh, we'll put in a good word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have lightning now? Uh, that's, I want, I'm, I'm going to be implementing it. 
Officially, unofficially. <laughs> so this is as far as we can get, given the fact that we, you know, pivoted before it made late late. Um, but yeah, it's an extended the code base is there and ready for folks to look at. So go ahead. Um, so you would have to just draw the link. Is there a way to like go to a code or like a double code? Yeah, that would be really cool. I think um, just like getting the idea out there is like probably makes sense for just someone to go go and like request like a cash out, but it also would be really cool. And I think it's technically possible if, yeah, if I could have you just like register your node and then as soon as those funds come in, like we just automatically push them to you. Um, what's that? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And I think like even with like full 12 kind of stuff where you can like, they can just give me, is that what you're talking about? So like you just give me like a open ended QR. Yeah, it's a little different. So for no, a lightning like, address, right? A lightning address is a back end like the LED URL where it's like, hey, let me reach outside of the lightning protocol, grab an invoice, back to the back. So I think that's kind of what you're talking about there, where that address that you're revealing to them is the lightning address. So they can send like an email to it or something. Thing, right, and then you, if they don't pay that invoice, don't forward along to the other person. Yeah, like the lightning address is kind of like a front end to like you can serve and stuff. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, okay. go ahead. Oh, what, um, what you would do on the back end? Is this is this the front end? Is this gonna talk to like all of their web pages, I guess? They have to have so, yeah, so like. A company would come to us and um, implement kind of like similar to how they do like Google Analytics or something like that, where they implement like that front end JavaScript. Uh, and it would just like ping our server when the page loads and then say like, is this user like, is this user able to access or like we paid you up front? Like, can we like get this data from and then the it's basically asking for permission. And then we see like, is this a paying like is blockchain.com paying? We can look that up in our database and then say yes, and then we kind of let the funds flow or we let the data flow. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this without saving the user's data because I don't want a data. I don't want to be like Equifax. I want it to just be like, maybe there's a way to save it where it's like encrypted and then the user can somehow like give them like the unencryption key or something like that. Um, so trying to figure that out, I'm not exactly sure how to do it. I know you can do it somehow um but yeah that's that's the idea yeah yep then we'll get hacked and then like so they'll steal it just the same as like with equifax right yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, you have it in sort of like a green light model where like on the browser on the client the literal client's browser is where the, uh, the key is held right and it just right. signs for all of the stuff that's mm -hmm. on or the yeah where they would like, yeah, they would like hand a key to the website that they're, so, they're going on. You don't want to hand the key to them. So they send you something to sign. You sign. Yeah. You just, okay. Yeah. 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 I guess I was just trying to
<laughs> someone someone paying for it. Yeah. So yeah, actually down right, right, right. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. I think there's a, there's a few things you can do, right? Like being able to like go to a website and have a good onboarding experience before the user's ever even been to your website before. Like that's pretty cool. Like that's something that websites can't do right now. So it's like new functionality that would potentially help them is a good reason for them to want to use something like this. Like I can say, Hey, welcome Dylan to like to our website. You've never been here before, but we we were able to like tell a little bit about you already. And that's really valuable to like e-commerce companies and stuff like that. So providing that kind of extra value that they don't get right now. Um, I think that's, that's really valuable. I think, yeah, I mean, they they would rather have that data for free, but I think at some point, if like enough users are using this where they're not getting any data unless they start paying the user for their data, like at some point it's like, well, we have to use it because uh, just there's like so many of our users coming to our website, we can't get anything from them anymore because this this Chrome extension is like blocking blocking all that user, so it kind of forces them on board after a while. Oh sure. All right.